This rather funky looking thing is the Madcat's Rat DWS, a wireless gaming mouse that uses the PixArt PAW3335DB sensor, their own Dakota switches, and a design straight out of 2010. In fact, the DWS looks like it came from almost the exact same mold as my now ancient Rat 3, except this one will set you back $120 dollars or an estimated 110 to 120 pounds. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. First, of course, you can check out that subscribe button for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Mad Cats as a brand have been around in one form or another for the better part of around two decades. Although the company that built my old Rat 3 is no longer. They filed for bankruptcy in 2017 and all of their assets were purchased and made into a new company called Madcats uh, that is now based in Hong Kong instead of California. Anyway, their rat line was relatively popular, at least for them, especially thanks to its incredibly unique design and the DWS hasn't strayed an inch from it. Seriously, these things look like they could be basically identical, except for of course the DWS was made in 2020 and this was made in like 2010. Even the base plates have the exact same design with the absolutely tiny PTFE glide pads. Now the DWS does come with a couple of modular parts in the box, which is pretty nice. Starting with the rear palm rest, you can adjust that anyway with a little sort of trigger action on the sides for a different, well, couple of different positions, and you get a different style, but not different shape version in the box, a silver one rather than the black and silver that comes stock. You'd also get some pinky rests in the box as well. I currently have the extended one that's a sort of rest that you can lie it down on and comes with possibly the largest PTFE pad on the mouse entirely. You can also swap the standard one for a rubber texturized grip one, which can actually be really useful considering how heavy this thing is. With the single AA battery installed that does come in the box, but is necessary since there is no USB port to plug this in at all, it weighs around 140 grams, not the 113 that they quote on their website. That's without the USB dongle nor a AA battery installed, meaning the weight that they're quoting isn't the weight that you'd actually be feeling when you play with it. And the reason that I bring that up is that when I was using this, after five or 10 minutes of playing, my wrist already started hurting. This genuinely feels heavy in the hand, potentially thanks to its metal base, or I don't know quite what, but it feels incredibly heavy and it fatigued my wrist incredibly quickly. On the side where your thumb rests, you do technically have a screw that you can remove, although because of the built-in buttons on this rest, this isn't actually user replaceable. It's hardwired into the mouse, and so it's a bit of a weird choice that they put a, a removable screw here, but either way, you do get a sort of, uh, they call it precision aim, but sniper button essentially, where when you press it, it can slow the DPI so that you can make those tasty sniper shots. You do also have forward and back buttons and a little inboard, you have a sort of horizontal scroll wheel. Now, in terms of ergonomics, the sniper button is in a pretty good place for me. It was relatively easy to get to while not being in my way so much that when I'm just swiping the mouse around normally, I would press it by accident. The forward button is in a reasonable position, but the back button was pretty far back and my thumb kind of had to contort to get to it. And then there's the scroll wheel, which you can pretty much only access if you lift most of your hand up off of the mouse, making it not that ideal. And honestly, ergonomics of the mouse in general just aren't great. Even adjusting the rear palm rest to be as close as comfortable as I can get, it's still quite angular, sharp, and also abnormally high, potentially thanks to its battery placement design in this sort of rear tube. Uh, but it just, it, it didn't feel great to me. It ended up being relatively uncomfortable no matter how I, I position myself. And it would have been nice if they'd taken the opportunity to include a different shape palm rest in the box rather than just a different color. Also, if you find yourself needing to put the palm rest to its most rear position as far back as it goes, when you go to put your weight on it and rest your hand on the mouse, you'll find that much like Vin Diesel in any, any Fast and Furious movie, the front lifts up rather quickly and rather drastically, which makes this a, um, 
rather interesting design. As for the bottom, like I said at the start, the number of glide pads on here really are fairly low and incredibly small. I mean, technically speaking, there is six on the main mouse, and if you include the added glide pad on the optional side piece, there is eight in total. But in practice, these are possibly the smallest glide pads I've seen. And so the chance of you wearing this out and not having any replacements in the box, at least that I can see, seem to be relatively high. You'll also find the power switch on the bottom, which you can push forward to put it in Bluetooth mode or push backwards to use the included USB 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which is actually stored in the mouse quite nicely. It's a little pop-out container and that's you ready to go. A uh, coated battery life for this using the 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle is around 200 hours on a single AA or if you're using Bluetooth, up to 300 hours. So what's it like to game on? Well, beyond the comfort, as I've already mentioned, the sensor tracks reasonably well. I did have a bit of an issue with it sort of jittering and twitching around. I think that was mostly uh, from liftoff's distance. It doesn't seem to be quite consistent there, but overall it was okay playing games. I even checked the latency using the 2.4 GHz dongle since, like I said, there's no USB port. You can't use this with a USB cable to get slightly better latency, and I compared it to a Logitech G703, as well as the Wired Rat 3, and for fun, also the Razer Viper 8K Hertz, and generally speaking, all of the standard 1000 Hertz mice were pretty much the same. This was maybe four to five milliseconds slower than the G703, but it wasn't noticeable in games. While playing in slower moving shots, it was okay, it was reasonable enough, and uh, while having the sniper button was actually quite nice, uh, I did use it a few times, for me personally, just having sniper buttons in general makes it a little bit difficult to get used to. Uh, you know, you kind of, you get acclimatized to a sensitivity and then changing that sensitivity on the fly is a little bit jarring, something to get used to, but that's not specific to this mouse in particular. The main problem for me while gaming was the, the comfort and weight. I have arthritis in every joint in my body, and so um, I'm perhaps a little bit more sensitive to uncomfortable peripherals, which for me, this definitely is one. And then there is their software. Now, the DWS gets a bespoke app that none of the other rat mice directly share, although it does look very similar to some of the other rat mice available. The thing is, when you're greeted with the, the first screen, first of all, the Madcast logo stays on your screen in the background for as long as the app is open, which is a really weird bug, or I guess maybe a feature. Either way, still pretty strange to see. But when you're, you're greeted with the, the first page, the, the programming page, it gives you a load of boxes that you can drag and drop actions into to, to set them to the mouse. It seems pretty simple, right? Except, the boxes don't really line up with where you think they should for the different buttons. You need to spend a good 30 seconds just staring at the screen, working out which box is for which button or which feature on the mouse. And then you look at the list of options and realize that the only options that you have available are things like media keys and saving and opening new tabs or the alphabets or you can do custom keyboard functions, which in and of itself is way more complicated than it needs to be. There isn't any option to set the sniper button to be a sniper button. There isn't any option to change your DPI to anything in particular or just cycle profiles. Instead, like I said, you only have those media key options. But then if you press settings and look through the drop down list, which is now a drop down list instead of a you know nice thing on screen, either way, when you look through that list, you'll see precision aim as a setting that you can change, in which case you go to that and you find out that, oh, the, uh, the, the sniper button, the precision aim button is already mapped to be the precision aim button. But on the first screen, all of those boxes were blank. Hell, even the back and forth keys, which I checked, are de by default mapped to back and forth, uh, back and forward, aren't, th th that isn't displayed on screen. So when you open the software, you would think that every single function, including left and right click and scroll wheel, have all been magically disabled until you manually remap them. But they're not. They all work just fine. Why they have a discrepancy between the mouse settings that are in the settings page for things like changing your DPI and changing the uh, precision aim 
function and what DPI that's set to versus what is on the programming screen, including even things like left and right click still don't show up in those boxes, I really don't understand. To say this mouse isn't for me is probably putting it lightly. For a mouse this expensive, I haven't even mentioned the, I suppose, lack of quality feel to it and the fact that the scroll wheel is so unnotched and unindexed that you can barely move it and it will still register a scroll and then move it almost two separate revolutions or two separate notches before it'll register another scroll the other way. It's it, the, the quality of this, despite having a, a metal plate, isn't fantastic, especially for the price that you're paying. And for me, this feels a lot like a, a prime example of form over function. I would much rather spend my money on a Logitech G604 instead, a similarly wireless, AA powered uh, gaming mouse with much better ergonomics, great gaming experience, and like half the price. While I wanted to, to like this, I mean, I'm still relatively nostalgic for a mouse that I actually still own, but it's, it's just not great and, well, I suppose that's my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Rat DWS? Is this something you check out yourself or is it more, um, well, funky than uh, functional, I suppose? That's probably a good way to put it. Um, feel free to let me know in those comments down below. As always, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below, although um, the supply, at least in the UK, is currently very limited. I think they're still rolling it out in terms of where to buy, um, so there may not be a link for the first few weeks or potentially months, depending on how long it takes to, to get them available. Otherwise, that is pretty much it for me. I would love to hear, like I said, your thoughts in the comments down below, and feel free to check out the rest of the links that are in the description down below as well for ways to support me and the channel. There are plenty of links from stuff like Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat and sponsor free videos. There's merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs. There's also a load of other affiliate links to places like Overclock GK, My PC, a load of stuff, so feel free to go check that out. And there'll be plenty more videos on the end cards as well. Maybe I'll leave the G604 review if you want to check that one out instead. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next video.